Dr. Benjamin, you probably heard in Jim Spellman's piece, we're talking about headaches, rashes, sore throats, nausea, trouble breathing. Are these the expected symptoms, if you will, from a toxic train derailment that we see, uh, we saw in East Palestine? You know, the challenge you have here is that you have these five chemicals um, that by themselves are highly irritating to the, both the skin, your eyes, they cause headaches, they cause a nausea. So all the symptoms that the, this, um, uh, these residents are, are having. And then when you combine these, when you burn them, you get a whole range of other chemicals, which also are very irritating. So the challenges that they're going to have is that even though the, on any one moment the air um, may be testing negative, um, you get off-gassing. That means that this stuff goes into your clothing, it goes into your, your drapery, uh, it goes into the ground, and every time you walk through that stuff, it gets re-aerosolized. Uh, and so that's the real challenge. They've got to go in and test every single house. Uh, and, of course, all those individuals need to get medically tested. Uh, Dr. Benjamin, you know, we keep hearing from uh, local officials, uh, health experts who've gone to East Palestine that basically the water supply is safe, the air is safe. Is there a way to determine some of these symptoms that people in East Palestine are experiencing is directly linked to what we saw there a few weeks ago? It's going to be very difficult to, to make those direct links. Um, I, I think that we should always use um, the caution um, that um, these symptoms are related to the exposure until we prove it otherwise. And how long do you think these symptoms are going to last? And are these short-term uh, health issues? What are the long-term issues that people can be, you know, can, people are going to have to deal with? I, I wish I knew it. I don't think anybody really knows how long um, this, you know, these symptoms are going to last. Uh, and in some cases, these may be exacerbations uh, of underlying diseases people already have that are made worse because of the exposure. Um, and only time will tell. I think the most, the safest thing for people to do, um, obviously, is if you can go someplace else to do so, drinking bottled water um, and, until you're absolutely sure the water is absolutely safe. And the fact that you've tested the water and it appears to be safe to drink, it very well may be, but bottled water is still much safer. And of course, you've got thousands of uh, fish that have uh, turned up dead in a stream that goes through the town. Oh, absolutely. And the, those fish may have died from exposure to the chemicals, or they may have died because the oxygen level in that water just became so low um, because of the chemicals that, that, that went in that water that the fish died. And again, until they do necropsies, those are autopsies on those fish, they're nearly not going to know exactly why they died. All right, we'll leave it there. Dr. George's Benjamin, thank you very much.